So at the beginning of MSI, LS and Nemesis got together and produced a tier list for each role, showing how good or bad they believed each champion to be. It certainly drew a lot of controversy, especially with champions like Renekton being in the don't tier for top lane, while Soraka was listed in the A tier for the same lane. Now that the Rumble stage has concluded, I wanted to go through all the games and see how well the tier list holds up, only looking at win rates and taking no context into consideration. First, we're going to go over the top lane. And the first thing I notice here is that the S tier champs are crushing it, posting a 67% win rate so far with 18 picks. Second, and the thing that's almost more shocking, is the fact that of the four champs listed in A tier, there's one pick between all of them, a loss for Camille. Now, looking at the champs in the A tier, they're all either challenging or strange picks to be played top, so it kind of makes sense. However, it's shocking how few games were played, especially with the prevalence of Camille in every region before MSI. We then move on into the jungle. And now jungle was probably the hardest role to read going into the tournament. It feels like the jungle pool got massively shaken up with Rumble, Morgana, and Kindred all getting recent buffs between playoffs for all the regions and MSI. It's important not to read into these win rates too much as comfort on a lot of these champions is something that has not constantly been demonstrated um, with it being questioned between every caster and every analyst in the scene throughout the entire tournament. Now, mid lane at a glance seems like the role where LS and Nemesis were the most off and struggled to predict who would do well the best, with the S tier below 50% and the A tier at an abysmal 33%. Seems like as the tiers go lower, the win rates only increase, with C tier being the highest significant tier, winning 55% of the games over 47 picks. But at least LS can rest easy knowing that people listened to him and Ari only had one game played the entire, entire tournament so far, which ended up resulting in a loss. Their bot lane tier list was clearly one of the most controversial, seeing as the first and third most played ADCs in the entire tournament are both in the don't tier. It's also another spot where comfort seems to be an issue, as the newly popular Kog'Maw and Vera seem to be struggling so far in the tournament. For bot lane, it's really surprising. The don't tier list has as many picks as all of the other tiers combined, and most of the other picks are just Tristana and Setna only, and those are all in the A tier. In the support tab is where we can see that LS and Nemesis have a completely different read on the meta and what is currently strong than everyone else in Professional League of Legends. Their S tier and Z tier only encompass Enchanter supports, and we've only seen five of those picked the entire tournament so far. The rest of the picks have pretty much been made up of only engaged supports, um, with all of those being listed in the B and C tier. But at least for those tiers, they listed the right ones above the wrong ones, uh, with the B tier being a 59% win rate and the C tier being 48% win rate. Now we get into the total accumulation. And we see here that when all combined, we get pretty lackluster results actually. The tier list is very close to 50% win rates in every single tier, with the only exceptions really being the Z tier, which performed worse, and the S tier, which performed better. Also, we have the rank that I haven't talked about yet, uh, the not in list tier. These are champs that LS and Nemesis did not foresee being picked at MSI, but ended up being picked anyways. To me, these champs are the most exciting, as it kind of always switches things up and causes for an exciting game as we see things we haven't seen yet in the tournament. And they've been performing better than we expect, having an 86% win rate, although that's only 6 wins out of 7 games. Lastly, and most importantly, I need to address the level of confidence we have with each of these statistics. Here we have the confidence intervals added to the previous graph, with the black lines there, and also a horizontal line showing the 50% win rate. Um, that's added so that we can show where champs are above average or below average, and how sure we are that they are above that. You can see here that none of them produce a confidence interval, which is above or below that line, meaning that we can't say with confidence that any of these tiers are better than the average. Even the not in list tier with an 86% win rate still just hasn't had enough games played to fully diversify and put it its itself above that line. To close, it's unfortunate that comfort has been such an issue throughout this tournament, with pros playing champs like Rumble, but clearly not to optimal levels, and then resorting immediately back to champs they've been playing throughout the rest of the year. I personally would love to see a team with expertise on a lot of the champs that LS and Nemesis rate highly. I think it would be great to see if they can break the meta and shift how teams need to play around them. But unfortunately, we haven't seen a team that's devoted enough time and training into learning how to play these champs at a consistent enough level. Thanks again for watching. Bye.